Welcome everyone to this data analytics webinar um, today, the 14th of April 2018, and we hope to take you through a lot of exciting things in today's webinar, give you a hands on demo, as well as talk about some very important concepts in analytics. Thanks all for joining. Our vision at equiskill.com is to help everyone get insights from the vast amount of data that is available to themselves and be able to improve the state of themselves, um, their country, or the organization you know, that they are a part of. And we've been around since the year 2015 and upskilling learners globally in analytics. Um, I am Amit Upadhyay and I'm the Quora world number two writer in analytics. I'm ex-vice president for Citigroup Global Analytics and Insight Division. I'm also the adjunct faculty for customer analytics, visual analytics at a lot of international universities. Uh, I am an international trainer. I've conducted 57 plus global workshops in India, Singapore, Malaysia, Myanmar, and more countries. Um, and I've got a total of 15 plus years of experience. I've worked at Amazon. I've worked at the GIOT teams and the Citibank um, analytics team before I actually kicked off my own company, equiskill.com in the year 2015. Um, and I've got along with me, my colleague Amit Singh. Amit Singh is from IIM Ahmedabad, the number one business school uh, in India. And I'll just let him introduce himself as well uh, for a quick second before we move ahead. So Amit, um, over to you for your introduction, yeah. please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks, Amit. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Amit Singh. Uh, I am uh, a data science practitioner uh, having around 10 years of experience uh, in, in the different industries in uh, mainly into management roles. So I have been working with Infosys, uh, Tata Group, Salar Guria Group into different practices. And uh, recently I've been fully into analytics consulting and analytics training for individuals as well as corporates. Hey, thank you so much. Yeah, and that's um, Amit Singh's profile over there. So thank you all um, for listening to that. All right. So we'll get going. And here we go. So we've conducted a lot of global workshops in analytics across the world and understood the need for analytics in Dubai, um, in London, in the US, in Singapore, in Indonesia, Jakarta. And we've trained people at a lot of companies uh, from Microsoft you know, to KPMG, EY, ABB, but these are just some of the companies that we've trained people at. And the reason why we're all here, folks, is the vast amount of data that is getting generated on the internet in each and every minute. So if you look at it right, I've got some highlights for you over here, right? You can all see that um, today, in one minute on the internet, you've got these many shares, right? On Snapchat, you've got, um, you know, Twitter, you've got 347,000 tweets in a minute. And people are just struggling to understand this data, right? And you're creating apps because, you know, people are downloading 51,000 apps in one minute. And Amazon is making a lot of, um, you know, visits, 4,310 visits a minute, but that's not a lot. I mean, if you look at it, typically in one minute, the kind of revenue that Amazon is making is around $83,000, okay? So that's in one minute, right? And this is US dollars, okay? So you can imagine the amount of traffic, the amount of data getting generated in every minute in the internet. And what's happening is that in the year 2018, where we are sitting right now, uh, and this is the month of April, the data is exactly double of the data that we had in 2016. So what I'm saying is that it is doubling every two years. And that is phenomenal because, you know, money takes, you know, five or 10 years to double, but data, well, data doubles every two years. And this is why you have so many people across the world interested in analytics. And this is why if you look at the LinkedIn hottest skills of the year 2018, no surprise, um, statistical analysis and data mining is right up there at uh, number two. And you should actually, you know, perhaps have a look at this blog over here, right? And I'll just share this blog and I'm going to share this with everybody um, after the class, right? And if you have any trouble in uh, hearing us, uh, please log out and log in. Um, if you have any challenges in the audio, can everyone hear me loud and clear? Please let me know in the chat box. There you go. So here are your top 10 skills across the world and no matter which geography you're in, Australia, Asia, um, you're going to see that the most in demand hard skills of 2018 will have statistical and data mining right on top. The average salary being around 82,000 US dollars. Okay, all right, there we go. So I hope um, that's kind of handy 
Now, just going ahead, right? The reality today is that there's a huge, huge shortage of data scientists. And um, we're just talking about, you know, phenomenal number of openings, you know, at any point in time. And the openings are, you know, set to grow every year by a significant um, percentage. And this is a dated number. Today, I think the average salary um, that's going for this skill is around $82,000. And in this, if you look at R, I think R has um, and a combination of R plus W. I think you know the, those kind of skills um, command more than $104,000 US um, in the market. Um, and if you're in India, also uh, you can just convert that in India, Jakarta, in Australia, around 110,000 Australian dollars. Um, if you're in Python, <clears throat> then probably a little bit less. Uh, Python is easier to learn, so it's a great language, and I think. Um, typically around $94,000 is the going wages for Python globally. No matter what skill you have, data is the new oil and data is a new soil that people are investing in. And there's no surprise today that even traditional companies that you thought would not be investing in data. For example, if you take a global conglomerate called Tata um, that owns the Jaguar cars, right? How many of you know Jaguar cars? Can you say yes in the chat box if you do? We want to keep this really, really interactive. Jaguar. Okay, a lot of you know that. So Jaguar is actually owned by Tata's, which is a traditional house in India. But today, even they have an analytics division um, called Tata IQ in Bangalore, which is a Silicon Valley of India. The point that I'm coming to is that every company understands that data is going phenomenally and that they need to invest in data. Right. And we've got a question from Olivia. So Olivia, thank you so much for raising your hand. Would you want to just throw out your question in the chat box, Olivia, so I can go ahead. Now, I want to ask you a question, um, all of you, right? What are the different kind of analytics that you've heard of? Um, and I want to know this before we go anywhere else, right? So this is where I need your help. Um, you know, Philippus, Rachna, Right, uh, Mohit, I, I need all of your helps, right? To understand what are the different kinds of analytics you've heard for Jerry Lee, Joseph Kevin, come on folks, okay? All right, so I hear predictive analytics, superb, okay, what else? Give me more examples. Okay, descriptive, all right. Exploratory. Okay, fantastic. Digital analytics. So quite a few, um, you know, updates I've got from you. Now I want to just clarify this and make this really, really easy now. Okay. So what we need to do is understand that fundamentally, folks, there's only three kinds of analytics, and everything else around it is the marketing. So let's talk about those three kinds of analytics that we have globally and understand these three kinds of analytics. Now what you have is. If you look at the volume, the whole place where the work begins is the descriptive analytics. So what is descriptive analytics, right? Descriptive analytics, and um, thanks a lot for whoever is drawing, but you might want to just, um, you know, not do that. Um, now, descriptive analytics here is all about your reports. It's about your business intelligence. It's about querying your data. And in a nutshell, descriptive analytics is about describing what is going on in a business. So let me keep this really, really easy, right? The moment you want to understand what's going on in your business, what you're doing is descriptive analytics. Typically, when you talk about what's going on in the business, you're talking about what already happened in the past. And that's what I'm alluding to over here on the left hand side where I write hindsight. And all of what you do on a regular basis, for example, all the reports that you pull at work with your drill downs of cities, locations of sales, um, performance metrics for different roles like salespeople, for example, versus sales managers, vice presidents, HR people, um, technical people who are working on you know, support tickets, all of those role based metrics as well is descriptive analytics. And then the alerts that you get on your mobile phone saying that, you know, someone withdrew a certain amount from your ATM or that someone logged on to your Gmail from a different ID. All of this is stuff that has happened in the past. So it is what has happened in the past and that is called descriptive analytics. Now the moment you have the descriptive analytics, what has happened in the past, you have the next question which is, I'm going to talk about it now. Suppose I say sales went down last month by 10%, okay? As compared to the previous year and that's what happened. Now I need your help folks. The first thing that the head of sales is going to ask you 
if you tell him that sales went down by 10% last month as compared to the previous year, it's a simple question and it starts with W and it has two more letters in it. Can you please answer this question? What is he going to ask? And absolutely, you guys got it, right? Harish, Saket, um, Sharon, John, you absolutely nailed it, isn't it? Why did this happen? And the moment you asked why this happened, you want insight. You're not looking at what happened in the past. So you can see here on the left hand side, insight, you want to predict hopefully in the future that you know how often might this happen, to what extent might this happen. The process starts with analysis, which is your algorithms and the data science algorithms that help you understand why things happen the way they happen, and then predict how they may actually happen in the future. So you create a model, to understand a model is nothing but a, a quick equation, a mathematical equation that kind of helps you um, predict why things happen the way they happened and how it might be in the future. And then you forecast this to understand the impact on your business. Now take an example, if you're running a meat and poultry business, and let me just take an example of a company called Japfa um, in, um, and how many of you know Japfa? If you're in Southeast Asia, you've probably heard of Japfa. Does anyone know Japfa? Yeah, it's a meat and poultry multinational company okay right and so you know you might need to forecast the impact of a global epidemic on bird flu and make sure that you know how it's going to impact your business uh, in different countries if you're japfa to take an example right and that is predictive analytics so you might want to find out why your sales actually went down and the reasons could be well there could be a lot of things for example it might be a lot of discounts let me just take that as an example um, it could be um, shipping cost you know it could be a lot of things but which one is it um, that impacted our sales and that you know process of discovery of why things happen the way they happened that is predictive analytics now the last question is then what is the highest form of analytics and you can see the degree of sophistication you know as we move from the simplistic to the complex analytics and the last one is your machine learning um, and your deep learning so i can just put that down here You've all heard of ML, you've heard of deep learning, hopefully you've heard of artificial intelligence, right? And your entire data science algorithms actually fall here in predictive analytics. And there's some amount of basic ML as well that comes in this zone. And this here is your data analysts that work on the entire descriptive piece. So these are not different things, right? You've got to understand that it's going to be 70% of the work that you're going to do is all going to be in data cleaning. It's going to be in descriptive analytics. Um, this is the bread and butter of the analytics industry. So please do not be surprised or disappointed if you work on this uh, when you join the industry. And then let's say another 20% is going to be predictive analytics, but really, you know, the 10% um, is going to be your ML and your AI. Now, what is this all about? So this part here, if, if I were to, you know, summarize to you in a very simple fashion that this is what is going on in a business and this is why it's going on. So suppose sales went down by 10% and suppose you discover that it was, um, for example, due to the, you know, discounts that you were going. And the next question is then that, how do we fix this? So, you know, or um, let me take a slightly simplistic example, uh, not the discounts. Let's say sales went down for mobile phones because people bought a lot of mobile phones at the beginning of the year in the new year sale. And they're actually now waiting for other sales. For example, the Christmas sale or the Black Friday sale. So that's why sales went down. So now machine learning would be all about giving people dynamic offers and human beings don't do this. Um, once you know what happened and why it happened, what's the logical question that you're going to ask? And this is also a three letter word and it's all about starts with H and can someone tell me what this is? Absolutely. Right. So thanks Kamal and Rachna. How do we fix this at the end of this, you know, analytics is not about just insight analytics and data science is about actionable insight. And if it is not actionable, it's not analytics. Right. So how do you actually fix this is really, really important. Okay. And that is the ML part. Now, mostly um, digital companies and the digital revolution is all about doing this using computers. Um, so machines are doing this. Human beings are not though. Whenever you receive an offer from Uber and the offer from Uber is, for example, um, that you've got a discount for the next one week, you've got a 10% off. Um, you don't have a human being making that offer to you. It's actually a bot that's doing that. We should have a lot of respect for bots though. Okay, there you go. 
So that is your prescriptive, um, you know, analytics. Now, if you've got any questions on this, I can take them. Otherwise, we'll move ahead to the next slide. I hope you all understand now the different kinds of analytics. To simplify this, if you work on any analytics greater than, for example, one terabyte of data, right? Then it's called big data analytics. And it could be any of these. It could be descriptive, it could be pre predictive, it could be prescriptive. It's not about you know, which one of these it is. As long as the data size is really big, people call it big data analytics and you'd use slightly different tools. Um, if you work on data that is, you know, let's say around one GB or lesser, you'd be more than happy to be able to use um, tools like Python or R, or Tableau, you know, to work on the data sizes. So tools, you know, they come and go. I don't think we should focus on tools. That's really, really important. Okay, unless there are more questions, I'm gonna go ahead to the next slide. Now I've got here for you the applications of analytics in different industries. My hope is that you'd want to know how analytics is applied. So if you read up on these topics, I think it'll be very clear to you how we apply analytics. Now let's take some examples though. Um, if you have an American Express credit card and the credit card that you have is a silver credit card. What is the next category of credit card that I could try and sell you if I know that you just got a pay hike? And trust me, it's easy to find out that you got a pay hike. Amex silver credit card and tell me in the chat box, what's the next category of credit card you try to sell? Okay. Absolutely, platinum, right? Now suppose I already have a platinum credit card and you're a financial company, so you cannot upsell me, and this is known as upsell, we'll talk about it. You cannot upsell you know, a platinum credit card to me. So what else could you try to sell me if I'm a financial company? Thanks, Ravindra, Sharon, and Vivek for your responses. So Rachna, Sahani, thank you so much. Uh, we should all clap for us. So we will be able to do cross-selling and you try to cross-sell loans to me. But the whole issue is that if you've got 25 million customers, who, how would you know which one of those customers to upsell and which one of those customers to cross-sell? And this is where you use something called market basket analysis, right? And you can see it written over here. You use market basket analysis to know what you could sell to an existing customer. For example, if they're buying a wireless keyboard, could you try and sell them something like a wireless mouse or could you try to sell them a Bluetooth adapter, right? So this would be done using market basket analysis and then you could do upsell and cross sell modeling. So this is one example of analytics. Let's take another example, right? If you've got a quick minute for me here, right? So the other example is that um, something called A-B testing. So let's talk about this a little bit. So you all remember that Barack Obama got two terms, you know, as a president. And when they were actually campaigning for his second term, they needed funds. When they needed funds, uh, they put together a lot of emails. So let's say, for example, the first email read that the Democrats would like your contribution for Barack Obama's re-election campaign bid. And that the second email, you know, it said that I, Barack Obama, request your contribution to my re-election campaign bid. So which one would you prefer? Which one would sort of compel you to donate to Barack Obama, right? <clears throat> okay, Balwan says email two, um, Kamal says two. Uh, anyone who thinks uh, email one is perfectly fine to have a different answer, folks. All right, so the whole idea is that there was an analytics company that actually worked on this and it wasn't two emails. So if it was just two emails, it would have been A, B testing, which means that you've got email A, you've got email B, and you need to figure out which one gets more positive responses, right? But they actually used you know, a lot of email templates, let's say 20 plus uh, email templates, which went out to 200,000 plus people to understand which ones would you know, compel the American population to contribute. And this got one of the highest contributions ever in the history of um, you know US elections for Barack Obama's election campaign. And you know the rest is history, he got a second term. But now you know how analytics and A-B testing helps people um, you know, generate the right positive business outcomes, right? Okay, so now um, you know, they just got a quick question. It's a great question. What's the difference between a recommendation engine and market basket analysis, which is over here. So let me just answer this question quickly for everyone. This is number one and this here is number two and what's the difference? We'll just find out, okay? Now the difference is, you know, do you take the statistical approach versus do you take the machine learning approach uh, to solve the problem. The same problem can be solved by using market basket analysis, and that would be a predictive technique. It's a statistical technique. So let me put it out here, right? Um, it's been around for quite a while. 
okay you could solve the same problem by using machine learning or deep learning and it would actually use <coughs> ml algorithms and mathematics to solve this so if you use ml or deep learning uh, to build the solution as opposed to the statistical method then what you would be doing is basically building an ml based um, recommendation engine okay now your recommendation engine could you know does not necessarily have to be ml or deep learning based it could also be statistical uh, you know on the basis of the statistical recommendation engine okay there you go so that's how that works traditionally uh, we've been using statistics to do these kind of things but increasingly they're beginning to accomplish it by using ml and deep learning because statistical modeling has um, some uh, you know limitations it works really good on static data but as soon as the data is dynamic um, you know and it's big in size it usually you know helps to let the machines do it as opposed to us doing it but there are some use cases for the statistical process as well for example healthcare where if you're doing clinical trials on you know animals you wouldn't have a lot of data you'd actually have a very small amount of data and because you wouldn't test it on a lot of animals so eventually you would use statistical um, you know market basket analysis or modeling in those kind of cases as opposed to machine learning so i hope that helps you there and what i've got here is all the industries and all the applications um, if you want me to talk about them i can do that for you but you can actually google some of these so this here is for retail sector this is the financial sector e-commerce healthcare telecom which is your number one consumer of analytics in the world and then you've got banking which is your number two consumer of analytics in the world and of course your linkedin and social you know engines which recommend friends that you should add on facebook or on linkedin and all of those things right that is all um, you know done using analytics okay all right and we're going to move now and manoj kannan is saying can you talk about hr analytics i will in a very short while manoj now banking has become the number two consumer of analytics in the world and there's this bank in europe which has a very small number of branches okay and i've got an assignment for you you need to guess which bank i'm talking about but if you had very few branches you know in europe all of europe how many branches do you think you might have take a wild guess okay everyone right make it really really wild okay we've got city 1 500 vikas is 503 oh, fantastic thanks a lot for those guesses um sernal so this you know this bank um has zero branches okay it's 100% online and what they've done is something called debranching which you can see over here right and debanking the idea is that today in the digital world what you need is banking you don't necessarily need a bank what you need is education you don't necessarily need educational institutions so you know internet and digital is revolutionizing all of this and um you need to get your problem solved for example if you are unable to transfer some money internationally or your money got lost on the way from one country to another if a bot can help you you don't necessarily need a human being to do that so the whole idea is and vivek says dbs that's not the right answer <laughs> keep guessing okay so the whole idea is that analytics is helping figure out where you need a human being and where you could do without a human being and some of you are going to ask me well what are the human beings going to do if the bots are going to do all the work and i think one of the best answers i ever got was from a colleague of mine who leads a big data and machine learning company and he said that you know that's an assumption we are assuming um, that human beings were meant to do work perhaps we were meant to do better things now i haven't been able to figure that out yet but i think it's a good answer for the time being okay all right there you go now hr it's not just about banks and telecom the story in human resources is a little bit like this and thanks kamal for your smiley um is that in the year 2013 the corporate executive board said that business leaders do not trust talent data at all and 82% of business leaders said that they did not trust talent data and that got a lot of people thinking especially when price waterhouse coopers um if you've heard of pwc did a survey and they found that 1258 ceos worldwide were not happy or were barely happy with their data now orange signifies not happy and sky blue signifies well they just about thought it was adequate okay if you combine these you realize you know that close to in this case you know close to 58% of the leaders thought that um the data for investment in human capital roi of investment in human capital was not conclusive now this got a lot of people thinking in the hr community and i think ever since 2015 
there has been a huge uptake of HR analytics um, across the world and all organizations are using analytics to sort of improve the quality of a lot of different things, including employee performance, quality of hiring, engagement, bench strength and optimization, right? All of these things, isn't it? So what I'm trying to say is that today, even if you're in supply chain, if you're, for example, working in support or in testing, there is an application of analytics in each and every industry across the world, right? All right. And um, what are the skills that you need for analytics? Well, here are some of the skills that you probably need. Now you'll notice that you probably have some of those skills, right? So you either have business skills, you're in banking or you're um, you know, in IT or you're in technology, you have technical skills or you, you're from a statistical background. So you know a little bit of data science and algorithms, but the whole story is that analytics is something that lies at the intersection of all of these skills over here, right? And there is an opportunity for all of us to upskill and pick up what we don't have. So if you know data science, well, probably you need to pick up coding, a little bit of business knowledge. Um, but on the other hand, if you have, for example, understanding of hedge funds, then you could learn a little bit of, you know, drag and drop analytics and some data science algorithms to see how you could apply those uh, for algorithm, al algorithmic trading, for example, right? And this here is by Gartner. This is the number one body of research on analytics globally. Okay, so you guys want to of course, you get all the presentations and the recordings, so you don't really have to worry at all. Now, what tools should you learn? And this is a really hot topic, right? So I blog a lot on Quora.com and I talk about this to a lot of people. Now, in business intelligence and data science for descriptive analytics, the best tools currently in the year 2017, as well as in the year 2018 are Tableau and Power BI. Microsoft Power BI, right? And this is important because if you take, for example, Tableau, I was looking at the average salaries in Australia, just to take one example, right? And it was around $110,000 um, a year for a decent enough entry level Tableau resource, right? Um, it's fantastic. And Microsoft Power BI, you know, it's doing really well because Microsoft is putting all of its weight behind the Power BI platform. Um, but they're also supporting R. So Microsoft has, you know, incorporated R into its uh, suite of products. And today you can use, uh, you know, MRAN, which is Microsoft's R version. And you can use this along with Azure, which is Microsoft's cloud. And there's also something called Scala R, which I'll talk about. So um, really that's the other tool that's becoming very, very popular. What about the predictive tools you're going to ask, right? So I think we've got a question here, package, um, a new, uh, well, if you're talking about wages, they can vary from around $80,000 to $110,000 in India. Typically, if you're talking about India, it can vary all the way from 5.5 lakhs to 9.5 lakhs, okay? Just to talk about that. Now, if you're looking at R and Python on the predictive side, those are also very, very good tools. And a lot of people tend to think of it that, you know, should I learn R or should I learn Python? Well, do not get into that discussion because tools change every few years. And you'll realize that R does a fantastic job of exploratory data analytics. It has very, very strong statistical packages, right? And it is very powerful in crunching the numbers, but the muscular capacity to crunch a lot of data in R is less but to be able to crunch the numbers and arrive at insight with statistics is actually higher in R, right? And Python, well, Python, for example, you know, the benefit is that R can only handle data that's equal to the RAM of your machine. So if your machine, for example, is a eight GB RAM machine, then that's the largest data set that you can handle in R. Honestly, that's optimistic. You might be able to handle up to two GB, right? Um, but in Python, if your hard disk has, let's say 100 GB worth of space that's free, Python has the you know, ability to use that as RAM and work on larger data sets, right? So Python is also very, very powerful in that sense. And it's very easy, elegant to code in, right? For those who love to code, and um, the way I would put it is that, you know, R is superb for data science and statistics uh, modeling and Python is very good for putting all of this into production. So I'm using this word here, production. How many of you are aware of this word? Okay. So basically putting it into the IT systems and making it go live. 
um, on the system. So currently Python does a better job of this, right? But what's happening is with the support that Microsoft is giving, R is also adding production capability, okay? <clears throat> All right, so that's a little bit about R and Python and Tableau and Power BI for you. Um, you know, what I would say is that, and I don't mean any disrespect, right? What I would say is that tools are for fools, okay? And what I mean to say is that if you're wedded to one particular tool, you're in trouble because over the years, um, you would have all realized that a lot of tools, they came and they went. Let's take some examples. So there used to be SPSS and then you had SAS and then you had Cognos. Um, let me just put that there, Cognos. And a lot of these tools, you know, MATLAB, um, tools come and go, that's the reality. And, but what does not change is techniques. Okay. And you will not believe that the most popular technique that a lot of people talk about, you know, um, let's say logistic regression, right? And I don't know how many of you have heard of Andrew NG, you know, he runs this course on Coursera.com. Now this technique logistic regression was invented in the 1960s for God's sake, right? And it's being used right now in the year 2018. And well, that hasn't changed, <laughs> right? So the whole point is that if you focus on the tools, um, things may not turn out very great for you. But if you become a master of the techniques and understand the data science techniques, which technique to apply to which problem, um, that may be a much better thing, uh, you know, for you going forwards, right? Okay. And um, Mohit says he knows Power BI. So which language should he learn? Uh, Python? I would say R because Microsoft is putting its weight behind R Mohit. So Power BI is far more compatible with R. All right, you should also learn Tableau, uh, which you already know Mohit because Tableau is also compatible with R. All right, can, I, can you elaborate on Tableau? Do you require any coding? No, Mo Manoj, you do not need any coding for Tableau. I've got a demo coming up very shortly on that. And um, in the Indian job market, which language is preferred? Is it R or Python? I would strongly recommend that you start with R and Tableau. And later, if you feel like you can pick up a little bit of, um, you know, um, Python and Teja says, can you simply say what is data science and what is data analytics? I'm a little confused. Okay, please do not be. So these are all industry terms meant to confuse you. There's absolutely no difference. There's only three kinds of analytics and what data analysts do typically is that they work on this section here, descriptive and up to the beginning of predictive. Um, these are your data analysts and what data science people do is that they typically begin from the descriptive and they work all through the predictive and a little bit of the um, prescriptive analytics. Those are data scientists. And then what do the ML people do? Let me take a different color here for ML. The ML people mostly are focusing on machine learning and deep learning, right? <coughs> those are your data scientists um, that are more on the advanced side, right? So I hope that helps you there. Canadian job market, um, you know, SaaS is very popular there for the insurance companies. So if you look at it, SaaS is being used a lot in Canada for the insurance companies. Australian job market, obviously, you know, Tableau is doing really well. And we've got some exciting demos coming up. So hang around for a quick second while we actually show you how all of these things work, right? Okay. Let me just see what I have here. Okay, so those are some of the tools and um, you know, we actually have a certification program that takes you through all of this. And at the end of the certification program, you learn data analytics in two months and we cover a lot of different tools. And uh, we've had 13 batches graduate since the year 2015. And I'll talk about um, the program in a very short while. It's called the Analytics Accelerator Certification. So let me just open it up for you. I think above all, um, you know, if you look at the Analytics Accelerator, it'll give you a fairly good idea of what are the skills that are required for you to launch yourself into analytics. A lot of our alumni are now working for um, companies in data analysis. Uh, they're working as data scientists. So that's a great place for you to um, look at the course curriculum and what you need to learn uh, to be a master in the world of analytics. So I've got a couple of demos now. I've got a demo in Tableau. I've got a demo coming up in text analytics in R. Um, the demo in Tableau, you know, we're going to focus on marketing uh, and uh, sales and also HR. I've got an HR data set um, that I'll talk about, right? And um, then we've got another demo coming up in um, R, right? So perhaps, you know, we could start with the R demo and then move, um, what we could do is we'll do the Tableau demo first. And in that I will look at the marketing and sales data set. Then we'll do an R demo 
and we'll come back to Tableau for an HR data set. So we've got three demos coming up. We'll move really, really fast. Um, the course begins on the 28th of April and all of you have a big discount. I will email across you know, your discount vouchers to you for having joined the class today. And um, someone is talking here about domain knowledge. How important is domain knowledge in analytics? So my answer to that is that domain knowledge is important. Okay, and uh, we were working on one of the data sets, you know, one of my colleagues and we achieved an accuracy of 79% when we did not know what domain the data belonged to. And then we asked the client, could you please tell us what kind of data um, this is? And they said, well, it's actually financial data. And the accuracy of the algorithm went up you know, to 89%. Our predictions improved by a solid 10% when we knew that it was financial data and when we knew the headers um, of the data. So you know what they had done, they had given us the data but they had not given us the headers. Once we knew the headers and the domain, um, accuracy shot up the 10, by 10%. So domain is important for data scientists. If you look at it right, um, and I'll just belabor this for a quick second, I won't take a lot of time. Really the most important thing is to be able to identify the problem correctly and think critically about the problem. You have to have a solid foundation in descriptive statistics as well as predict, you know, uh, inferential statistics, right? These two things are really, really important. And then you've got to get hands on in, you know, tools like Tableau and Power BI and R. Um, you know, you've got to make sure that you do a very go good job of your descriptive statistics before you move on to your predictive data science techniques, as well as your ML algorithms. You should be able to work on all kinds of data, for example, social media data of Twitter, uh, sentiment analysis, and we'll show you a demo on this today, as well as you should be able to work on um, data that is, uh, you know, numerical data, uh, you know, because you've got data from many different backgrounds, right? Okay. And another question from Hengi is that, you know, uh, Hengi is that uh, they're from an, you know, an educational background where they're actually from commerce background. Can you become a good data scientist? Absolutely. So here's the fun, right? And I just want to show you that I have hired in my career total of 430 data scientists and uh, some of them uh, had studied English. Some of them studied pharmacy. Um, some of them were engineers. Um, there were many MBAs. We had folks from economics. We had folks from maths. Um, I remember having hired people from statistics, uh, physics. So, you know, just about any background that you can think of, I hired people from those backgrounds. Now, they'd actually made the effort to learn analytics and get upskilled in analytics. Typically, um, they learned one of these tools, right? And let me just put the tools out there for everyone's you know, opinion. <clears throat> First, they learned the techniques. And the techniques that they learned were linear logistic regression. After learning the techniques, they picked up some tools, um, typically SAS, or for example, Tableau, or R, or Python or Power BI, right? These are some of the tools. Um, I should not forget to mention ClickView. This is also another one. Okay, there you go. And then they applied for roles. Um, they worked on data sets, they applied for roles and they actually um, got hired. Now on this topic, right? What I would also suggest to you is that um, you want to go and read the blog that I've written on Quora.com. Now let me just open a Quora.com and there's this hugely popular blog um, Thanks a lot to all the people that helped make this blog popular. And I'll just click on my profile here. There we go. How to be a data scientist from the scratch. So this is a pretty popular blog. And there's another blog here, how to make a career in data science. Okay. So let me just take this blog here, copy this blog and share it with all of you in the chat box. And I'll make sure that I add it to the presentation as well. Okay. So don't worry about it. Okay, there you go. So this is a really good blog for you to read and understand what all you need to understand to become a data scientist. And um, there's another one that I've got, you know, which is even more in depth. I think the second blog over here, how to make a career in data science. Um, I've talked about some of the things you can do in big detail here, right? And I've got a couple of videos, you know, for you to watch which tools to learn all of this here, right? So I would just request, you know, if in the interest of time, would it be possible if you guys could, you know, sort of read these blogs. Yeah. Could you please say yes in the chat box? And uh, and then if you still have questions, you just want to shoot me your questions um, at um, contact at equiscale.com. 
right? And I'll be more than happy. Just shoot your questions to Amit, and I'll be more than happy to take your questions. And you can even attach your resume. I'd be happy to give you very specific advice. And um, what I will do here is, can you share the links along with the presentation? Yes, that is possible. So let me add them here. And to make life easy for all of you, I'm going to add the links um, right here in the presentation. Okay, there you go. All right. So are you guys um, excited? Do you want to start off with um, a demo? Do you want to do Tableau? Yeah. Shall we go ahead and do a Tableau demo? Please say yes in the chat box. Okay. And I've got a lot of data, right? I've got sales and marketing data. I've got HR data on succession planning that you can see here. I've got a talent nine blocker here. Um, long term unemployment trends, a lot of stuff. Okay. So let me just kick it off with a little bit of sales and marketing. And then we'll proceed on to the um, demo on R. All right. There we go. So in Tableau, the first thing you want to know is that you can connect to a variety of data sources. Nice and easy. So if you click here on more and look at this here, whoa, you've got like a bunch of data sources that you can connect with, right? Everything from your humble Google sheet that you have um, to MySQL, Splunk, Teradata, Dropbox, you name it, right? It's there, Amazon. All of these databases um, can be sort of connected to in Tableau. So it's really, really compatible with many, many different data sources, right? And can you connect to Excel? Well, the whole thing is there are 750 million users uh, in Excel globally. So the first thing you want to understand is that Excel is the bread and butter of the analytics industry. So though no tool can ever survive <laughs> without connecting to Excel, right? So here you go. So here's Microsoft Excel. And let me do that, you know, for the time being, I'll just connect to Excel and work on a small data store um, called the Global Superstore. Okay, here we go. Now, the moment you connect to a data source in Tableau, what you notice is it shows you the different, you know, tables in that particular data set here, right? So I've got many orders that have been placed. I've got some returns. I've got some people who actually place these orders and returns. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, have a look at this data. So Harish says, can we have a look at the Excel data? You actually don't need to. All you need to do is drag and drop orders over here. And the moment you do that, Tableau will load up the data for you here. This section here is called the data canvas. And this is where you drop your data. And notice that when I, you know, drop returns over here, Tableau will automatically detect that, you know, there's something in common between the orders and the returns. There you go, right? <clears throat> and these are sheets of a workbook, right? Like Harish has asked. And Tableau automatically detects fields that are in common between different tables. So you don't have to do any VLOOKUPs whatsoever. Works fantastically, okay? For the time being, I'll remove, you know, returns um, of the products and I'll just focus on the data here. A couple of things you want to focus on, right? That you are actually connected live to the data source. If you make any changes, um, they will reflect here in this sheet. There's also the opportunity for you to extract this and work on a static version of the data, which means that it's not going to change while you actually work on this data. Okay. So this one here is the sales and marketing uh, demo that I'm giving you. I also have an HR demo coming up after the Twitter sentiment analytics, where we'll talk about what's going on with Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. Okay. Um, now over here, what you'll notice folks is that Tableau really makes your life easy. It tells you where you've got numbers. Okay. It tells you where you've got character data. So this is character data and it gives you these indicators that tell you where you've got time data. So this one here is time. Right. And you can also see where you've got geospatial data. Now, don't let me scare you. This is basically location. Okay. Anything with location, it could be latitude, longitude, it could be cities, it could be countries, it could be counties in the US, um, it could be states in Mongolia. Any of that, you know, um, would be, you know, geospatial data. Okay. So Tableau gives you a great idea of what kind of data you have, and you have the opportunity to hash and slash your data really, really fast. And let me do that for you right now, okay? Um, Tableau can handle a lot of GBs, uh, Narendra. It is possible to connect to very, very large data set in GB, but for TB and all, I think you might want to go to a big data tools. Understand that a lot of the data that you'll work on in the analytics industry is barely 100 to 200 MB of size, okay? So while there's a lot of hype around big data, the reality can be a little bit different. Okay, so I'm going to split this field called order ID. You can see three parts in this. You've got well, the state where the order was placed, you've got um, the year when the order was placed to the actual order ID. And if you go, 
you can see a lot of stuff like you know what was the shipping customer id name of the customer um, the segment of the customer right all of this information and if you scroll to the right you can also see you know what kind of segments do you have like furniture technology office supplies what are the sub segments that you've got there what are the actual product names that were purchased and the sales quantity profit discount shipping cost all of this information right order priority so all of this is visible over here okay um and um sayed if you're having challenges again i would recommend that you um, log out and log in um it's um, your internet issue um, you know at your end i hope everyone can hear me clearly yeah okay thank you so much so sayed you might want to just you know work on your internet connection okay thank you so much right so how do you work in tableau okay and why do we work in tableau is a very important question to answer right why can't you just work in excel i mean what's the challenge I and mean, why do we ever need to work in tableau can anyone answer this question yeah okay so quick segue right um techniques involved yes arun we have techniques involved in a very short while so quick segue right the whole deal is that real visual analytics is actually quite different from visualization so this is visualization right i mean everyone does this on a regular basis but real visual analytics is not about just making charts and graphs okay it is about exploring your data visually instead of using excel sheets and formulas analyzing it visually and moving from one view to another um and everyone knows that we like visualizations like these right as opposed to this you'd love to see breakfast like this isn't it and that we all know but the whole challenge is you know why do we visualize and a lot of people do not understand this especially the technical community so let me actually you know help you understand this okay tell me how many nines do you see on the screen right now everyone come on nagarajan arun how many nines do you see right now yeah okay many nines yeah but how many okay see human beings put pressure on other human beings to be great at numbers the reality is that we are better at something else now tell me how many nines do you see on the screen now come on this is easy folks yeah all right so it's 10 nines isn't it why did you guys do so much better when i used color because human beings are not necessarily great at numbers we are actually much better if we exploit our visual analytics abilities and let me take four data sets here to help you understand why r or python cannot help you okay so you've got here four data sets of x and y let's say y is your sales and x is your profit okay and in these four data sets if you try to analyze it statistically you'll realize <coughs> that okay i'll answer uche um, ukugo's question um uche says you know what's the fate of someone with zero knowledge in data analysis okay the your fate is that someone called mark is going to be very very rich um while you're going to be very very poor right so it is important um that we understand that we are generating 80% of the data on the planet you i all of us in this video conference okay but this 80% of the data is not owned by us it ends up being owned by just 20% of the people who run big companies um social or professional networking companies it is possible however for you to harness this free of cost okay if you know how to use data and scrape the internet and amit singh will talk about that in a very short while so what i'm saying here is folks that these four data sets when you analyze them using statistics and mathematics you will get zero results okay and i mean zero because they are actually identical absolutely identical the mean variance correlation linear regressions are all exactly the same but if you visualize the same data yes and i am talking about the pareto rule you realize that these were absolutely different from each other so this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 and this is 4 and this was not possible to analyze by using you know r or by using python or by using mathematics but it took human beings no time to understand this data the moment they visualized it and they saw a relationship here they saw you know profit goes up but then it goes down they saw it steadily goes down and they saw there's no relationship in the fourth data set so this is why we visualize okay visual analytics is much more important um then just presenting your data you actually explore your data by using visual analytics so let me go back here and show you the difference i'm going to head into worksheet in tableau but it's not going to look like an excel sheet it's going to look a little different okay 
here we go kaboom now the moment you end up in this sheet you realize that you've got something called dimensions and measures all right and guys please focus on uh, the demo i will take all your questions after this so you you have this fantastic opportunity to learn tableau now measures are the things that you want to control all right for example you want to control how much discount you give you want to control the profits the sales you want to keep shipping cost low these are measures but there are things that only describe your data you do not want to control them all right and those things um, are called dimensions okay to take an example um, the name of your customer i haven't met a company that had a customer called john and they wanted him to change his name to peter um that's not going to work right so <laughs> the whole idea is the things that remain the way they are you don't actually influence them those are dimensions and the others are measures is this clear to everyone or shall i explain a little bit further just say yes in the chat box jerry lee jant um hanky harish just say yes so i know you're clear on this all right superb so harish says no please explain a little bit further okay okay i'll explain this uh, even better to you okay here you go see when a baby is born there are things that we all measure to make sure the baby is healthy for example the temperature of the baby all right the um, you know length of the baby let's say whether the baby is crying or not right let's say the blood sugar all of these things have desirable values to them okay for example you do want a baby to cry so the desirable value is yes you would like the temperature to be 98.4 degrees celsius isn't it all right but there are things that do not have desirable values and let me just talk about some of them now okay just give me a quick second yeah for all the folks that have understood here for example the color of the baby is it a black brown or white baby they are all wonderful colors to have or the color of the eyes um do they have blue eyes or do they have green eyes right um or the hair is it curly or is it straight now we talk about these things we talk about them to describe the baby or whether the baby went on the mother or whether they look more like the father you know or the shape of the face is it a round face is it um you know a long face these are all things that describe the baby but there are no desirable values to these things okay or a boy or a girl right fantastic so now are you all clear about what are dimensions and measures please say yes in the chat box if you are okay and harish yes tableau automatically detects dimensions and measures but you can drop things from measures to dimensions or you could drop them back from dimensions to measures if you're actually unclear on what's going on now let me do some predictive and some descriptive analytics for you really really fast if you want to know which categories of products are performing well in different markets and in different segments and how much quantity we have sold you just select all four of these things and you have a recommendation engine on the top right corner called show me it recommends the stack bar so you could select the stack bars and just by selecting these four variables um in a very short while you understand you know how you're performing in different segments uh in different markets for different categories right all of this is you know easy to understand um if you drop it all together right so tableau kind of works to populate these things for you but you could even go sequentially right so you could say for example which categories are performing well and you could say which quantities um you know are we selling and then in which markets are we selling them so you could add market um to the picture let's say over here or, or over here in the columns and you could even add profit on top of color to see which markets are profitable right and you could even drop you know apart from this you know category you could even drop the customer segments into the rows over here like so okay and you get a very good view of which markets are performing well for us now the moment you look at this visualization you can all tell me that which is the smallest market for us across the world can you please all tell me the name of the market smallest market in all of these markets come on it's nice and easy folks absolutely right it's canada and which markets are the emerging markets for us now if the management asks you these questions it should take you no time right <clears throat> emerging markets just beginning to grow okay come on folks everyone right you definitely but what about emia and africa yeah 
isn't it? EMEA in Africa. So you can even annotate these things and you could annotate this point and say that this is an emerging market and this is a great feature um, that you have in Tableau. Okay, and you could even say new market for Canada. So you could annotate this point and you could say new market, right? For Canada there, okay? There we go. All right, so this is, you know, a basic sort of exploration that we've done here. Um, I'll drop market on top of color here so we get an even better visualization of emerging markets, right? So I'm just gonna rename the sheet emerging markets and then we're going to work on something more complex. See, what we're doing here is we're doing descriptive analytics. So let's connect this to the theory that we've learned a short while ago. Um, and this is what we're trying to do. Right now we're describing, uh, you know, what's going on in this data. We will now shift gears and we'll move to predictive, but before this, I'll create an excellent, uh, you know, visualization of global sales and profits. Now this should take absolutely no time, right? Now, when you compare this to Pivots, Manoj, you know, Tableau has far more advanced visualizations and a recommendation engine here on the top right corner. You know, Excel does not have a recommendation engine for visualizations. So you know which visualizations work well for what kind of data. And of course, Tableau has far more sophisticated visualization and it applies design thinking. If you've heard of design thinking, which you know, you don't have so much of in Excel. And I'll give you some examples, right? So for example, um, you know, in a short while, I'll show you how design thinking works in global sales and profits. If I want to know how the sales is doing in different countries, I just select sales and countries. You can see different colors for country and um, sales because one is a dimension, one is a measure. And this is a visual cue that Tableau gives you. I go to show me and it says, hey, why don't you select this here, the symbol maps. And I'll go along with Tableau's recommendation engine and I get my symbol maps, right? And mostly Tableau takes um, structured data, yes, that is true, but you can connect it with R and Python to get unstructured data. Right now, the sales across the world looks really, really good, but this can change very quickly. If I need to see the sales in different states, and if your management asks you that, all you need to do is take state and come and drop it on top of the map. And then the moment you do that kaboom, right? You see the sales for all of the different states. You could zoom into any particular country, let's say the United States, and look at what's going on for that country. But then we don't know if this is profitable or not. So this is not an Excel sheet. What we're doing right now, folks, is visual analytics. You're asking questions and I'm giving you the answers on the trot, right? And Tableau has a very good capacity to explore data as compared to Power BI, but Power BI is very good for data modeling and for video analytics, which Tableau is not capable of. All right, so what we'll do is I'll take profit and drop it on top of color, okay? And the moment I drop profit on color, you see profitable states across the world. You can unpin this view and you can get a view of global sales and profits. To make this intuitive, um, we will take green for uh, profits and red for losses and use the full color range. And here's your view of global sales and profits across the world, right? And this takes seconds to you know, prepare as opposed to any other um, tool globally. You can even add your values like this and you can look at a particular country. If you want to zoom in, for example, and understand what's going on in Nigeria, you do not have to work on an Excel sheet. You just zoom right into Nigeria, increase the size of your visualizations to understand that the neighboring countries, Cameroon um, and Togo are profitable, but Nigeria has huge profitability challenges, right? right? But not just this, you're capable of doing more things in Tableau. So very quickly, I'll give you an example of predictive Tableau and hand it over to Amit Singh um, for the R demo. I wanted to ask you, um, do you all have 15 minutes more for us? Yeah, Vikas is excellent. Guys, can you give us 15 minutes? Okay, for anyone who cannot, you know, we have a recording, okay? So don't you worry there. Now I'll call this view here, the global sales and profits. There you go. This is descriptive analytics, but I'm going to step it up now and move to predictive analytics. Now, if you look at global sales and profits, I'm going to look at each category and see which categories are creating losses. So I'll add a filter for category and I'll make it a single values list, move to a maximum view. The moment I click on all, I see huge profitability issues in Texas, Nigeria, Pakistan, Istanbul. If I click furniture, there are even more um, you know, challenges with profits 
and office supplies and technology technology there's less challenges right more green color that you see in technology but in furniture you see a lot of red color across the world so we need to investigate this why is this happening so we'll step it up and we've answered the question what's happening now let's answer the question why is profits low for furniture okay and tableau helps you do this with ease you know what i'll take is i'll take um, for example, I'll investigate furniture profits with shipping cost. Okay, so I'll take shipping cost and I'll drop it here on the rows. I'll probably take, um, you know, profit and drop it on the columns to see what's going on. Um, I'm going to drop market on top of shape so I can see all the markets and um, I'm going to drop profit on top of color. <clears throat> Just a second here. I'm sorry. Yeah, so I'll drop all the markets. Let me see all the customer IDs. Here are the details of all the customers across all of the markets. Let me see if I can put shipping cost up above and profit down below. There you go. That's much better. And I'll drop market on top of shape here. So I have all the different markets across the world. And now what you have is all the transactions in all the different markets across the world, right? And I'll take the different segments that I have, furniture profits, and I'll bring that into the equation. I'll drop it on top of color and kaboom, I have every transaction across the world, but I want to understand is shipping cost low because of profit or not. So here's where I go into the analytics pane and see if I can drop a linear regression trend line to understand. And the moment I do that, I can see the equation, profit is equal to shipping cost plus profit multiplied by some numbers. And there's an R squared value. The R squared value is 0.12, which is only 12%. What that tells me is that profit depends on shipping cost only to the extent of 12% and the P value is less than 0 0.0001, which means that this accuracy of this prediction is 99.999%. So we can say, or we can predict the relationship between profit and shipping cost with this equation to the accuracy of 99.999%. And we find that the relationship between the two is only to the extent of shipping cost you know, only to the extent of 12%, which means honestly, profits are low, but they're not being impacted on shipping cost. They're probably being impacted by some other variable, okay? So you might want to rename this sheet, you know, profit versus um, shipping cost. And you might want to add an annotation here, you know, and I'm just gonna annotate this area here, and I'm going to say profit is not, you know, low due to shipping cost. Okay, and I'm probably going to say we need to investigate further. Okay, so this is, you know, sort of how you work in predictive analysis uh, in Tableau and it has the capability to do all the predictive analysis that you want. So you can do log logistic regression, exponential, polynomial, power based regression, all of that is possible in Tableau, clustering, forecasting, all of your data science and ML techniques are possible. All right. So I'm going to stop here and we've got something even more exciting. We're going to talk about, um, you know, Facebook and what's going on there. And there's a lot of things that are not so great, right? What if you could, you know, connect to Twitter and find out what exactly human beings are thinking about Facebook, what they're thinking about Mark Zuckerberg, right? Wouldn't you all like to see that? Please say yes in the chat box if you would. Okay. And I'm going to make my friend Amit Singh the host now to walk you through a live Twitter analytics of exactly what people are thinking on the internet right now about Mark Zuckerberg. Now, trust me, all of you can do this, okay? And those who are from HR, you know, you can even talk about HR analytics. In a short while, I'll do another demo. So Amit, over to you here, okay? And guys, please do not be afraid of this coding here, all right? This is really, really easy. Uh, anybody can do this, okay? Right, thanks, yeah. Amit, over Thank to you. Thank you, Amit. I, I hope I'm audible and uh, I think my screen is also visible to everyone. In case anyone is facing a difficulty, they can just uh, put a message in the chat box. Yeah. Yeah, great. Uh, so this is actually our studio, our interface where uh, uh, you run your scripts. And uh, it's pretty simple, actually, if you look at our uh, for different operations, you will see you know, we are using maybe like one line or two line or three line of coding. And that does wonders actually for descriptive statistics, for building models. Uh, this is the code of uh, 
uh, getting uh, tweets about Mark Zuckerberg. Facebook has been in news for a while in the recent past and uh, maybe not for good, but there has been a lot of things going on and we want to uh, just get a gist of what's happening on Twitter. Uh, so here, um, I will come to the code part later. Let me just show you what kind of uh, like insights we get when we look at the uh, tweets. So here we are analyzing uh, recent thousand tweets on Twitter and we are just looking what kind of uh, things people are talking about, right? So you can see people, uh, people are talking about million, you know, a lot of millions of records which were breached. People are talking about testimony, grilling, the problems Facebook is facing, the investigation going on, the election campaign, uh, uh, data manipulation happened, those things. Quickly, we get an idea on what people are talking about. And it becomes much more interesting uh, when we want to look at uh, what kind of sentiments are coming out of it. Right. So this is the sentiment graph. So you can see that there's a lot of uh, uh, like you know, people are more positive and having trust just because of the sheer amount of uh, users they have. But you will see that a lot of negativity or negative score is also coming up in the comments. And a lot of anticipation which is coming around uh, due to the promises and the government's intervention on actually putting a cap or putting restrictions on the privacy uh, breach that is happening and restricting the laws across uh, what you can say the social media companies and it gives a fair idea on uh, Facebook as well uh, when they look at say what was the uh, sentiment before the breach happened and what is the sentiment going on now and uh, uh, where they need to work on to like build their brand again in the market and uh, again reposition gain customer trust. So let me quickly just uh, a glimpse, give a glimpse of the code. Uh, so people who are not from the technical background or engineering background, uh, there's nothing uh, to worry much about uh, because when we, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, standard steps which remain uh, say common. All right, so Amit, I had a quick, quick request for you, right? Yeah. Um, probably if we could, you know, uh, give me back the control for a quick second. So I will yeah. share or, or what I can do is see some of the folks who have joined. I hope you're all, um, you know, aware that you will give a discount for the analytics accelerator certification. So Amit, if you could open the equiskill.com sure, page sure. and uh, just, um, or yeah, yeah, I'll do it. So I just want to make sure, you know, first of all, this is Amit's profile here. So all of you can actually see his profile. And apart from that, I want to make sure that you all get your uh, video recording, your presentation and your discount code for joining the course, which is on the 28th. And um, here is the feedback form. So those of you, you know, I noticed a couple of people were leaving. Do not leave without filling up your feedback form. So I'm actually sharing your feedback form. And in the feedback form, we've requested for your email ID, uh, your name, your mobile number. Now understand that, um, you know, unlike some social networking companies, I'll keep this 100% confidential and I respect your data a lot. Okay. Um, some, some brief feedback on how you felt about this webinar. Very, very brief. And I'll be sure to make all of you get the presentation data source codes and the recording for this particular session. So that's the quick thing that I, you know, wanted to share with you. And all of you will get, you know, a discount to the data analytics accelerator certification which we are going to be starting on the 28th of this month. Uh, on the 21st, we have a repeat of today's webinar. So exactly the same session that we are conducting today will be held once on the you know 21st, right? And I'm adding the course link here. The course is approximately $399, which is 21, uh, 25,900 rupees, but uh, in Indian rupees is 21,900 here. For those of you who um, are actually in the US or across the world, Nigeria.
can't hear anything uh, hello uh, yeah hi everyone uh, i hope uh, i am audible just uh, type if you can uh, hear me okay okay great great so uh, yeah uh, amit was talking about uh, the the if you you can just check the link so where you can see the course detail and the current discount going on uh, for the people uh, who are joined today so just please don't uh, forget to fill the form and uh, we'll share all the details uh, along with you will also get the link where you can avail the discount especially for this batch uh, and the batch will start on 28th of april uh, i think amita shared earlier just a second let me again paste it yeah so these are the actually the two links i'll just again copy paste yeah yeah thanks sir uh, so just uh, uh, let me again uh, go back and just give you a glimpse of our interface and our language so Uh, see even i am i am not doing coding from say last 10 years but it was very easy uh, to pick up uh, r especially because it's a very high level language where there are a lot of libraries which already have uh, the coding part of the different functions for uh, different uh, different uh, roles so here if you see uh, for especially for uh, sentiment analysis using twitter feeds these are standard libraries which have different functions which you use so let me just take you through quickly on uh, yeah so these functions we use to say set up the connection with twitter uh, yeah then here we take out the tweets what kind of uh, hashtags we want to analyze okay and just this is the cleaning part of it so we cannot use say people use all kind of symbols and uh, uh, their shorthand to put the tweets so these are standard uh, functions to clean it up and then we clean it up and uh, we put it in a matrix format and make a word cloud of out of it which we already seen and uh, we also do a sentiment analysis where we use standard packages so you can you you can do all kind of uh, different sentiment analysis which may be say for you want to know your if you are in marketing or sales you want to know the what kind of sentiments are coming out of say new product launch it may not be like just only coming on twitter you can do web scraping if uh, people are talking about online posting it there and if you have you are getting say you are uh, capturing customer feedbacks which is a very strong uh, input uh, to know about the effectiveness of product launch or the marketing campaign or brand reputation okay or, or if you want to know about the what new industry trends are coming up like if you see in uh, uh, say in uh, currency cryptocurrency people are talking about multiple currencies what kind of currencies are coming up in india and the technology like blockchain and security so what kind of new trends are emerging what kind of industries are uh, adopting those kind of trends so it becomes uh, much more interesting uh, uh, and uh, with the minimal if you see uh, we hardly have like less than 100 line of code and with that you can do great wonder in analyzing uh, sentiment hello hello am i audible hello. now yeah amit you are audible now great okay thank you so much i am so sorry we had a challenge yeah okay please go ahead yeah no problem so, so amit when yeah. you are ready i can take it back you know for the i i i, I think yeah, i have given an idea on it and maybe like if there are any questions in chat box i will be happy to answer so i think you can uh, take the control now sure sure yeah. all right so i will take over and reclaim the host yeah couple of things you know um, i wanted to share is that when you look at the course page right we are offering a course um i'm sorry about this um there we go so the course is for rupees 25900 it's on saturdays and sundays at the same time which you've joined um today and we've got quizzes we've got you know assignments we've got projects 
uh, for people. It's uh, English language. It's 48 hours. It's 16 classes of three hours each. And we're going to be covering R, Tableau, Power BI, and Advanced uh, Excel 1 class as well. Um, and the course is really, really detailed, right? So if you look at it, every technique, including Power BI, data cleaning, um, introduction to data analysis, statistical foundations, and then your R introduction, just getting comfortable with R, right? I'm going to cover that in the course as well, okay? And after we make you comfortable in R, we will also you know, help you understand visual analytics and advanced dashboarding and storytelling in Tableau. It is very powerful, all right? And it's very lucrative in the market as well. So please understand that's very important for you as a data scientist. And then we will get into all of your data science and machine learning algorithms. So the most popular ones are linear regression in R, logistic regression, decision trees. Uh, we will also talk about querying your data. We will teach you text mining sentiment analysis, market basket analysis for recommendation engines. There's a live e-commerce data set and there's very few programs on the entire internet that will give you a live project with dirty data, which will show you how to actually clean that dirty data and work on it using R, using Tableau. And finally, we will also get into machine learning and introduce you to machine learning, the gradient descent algorithm and forecasting your data in R to look at sales, seasonality, trends, cyclicity, all of this will <coughs> you know, happen uh, in this program. So it's one of the best programs um, that we have on the internet and um, we have a lot of people that are there in the US and in London. We are actually an independent and autonomous certification. But if you look at it, um, you know, if you just look at the people that are part of our program, um, you have people from Nigeria, like Ifi. Ifi here, you know, has shared a lot of his um, activity uh, and he's talked about us in his posts and he's sort of, you know, um, hashtagged me right here. He's actually working on some visualizations here. So you'll see um, they actually, you know, hashtag some of the leaders globally in analytics, including Equiskill. Um, you will see uh, people who are certified by us in India as well and in the US as well, in Canada and in London, right? And they typically share on their page their certification. So the best part is you can actually add this on LinkedIn. And let me show you how. So this is one of the learners um, and what he has done is he has added in his certifications. He has added equiskill.com as one of his certifications. And here we go in certifications, you can add the analytics accelerator certification on LinkedIn and it's um, recognized. There you go. Okay. So we give you a dynamic link, which you can add and people can view your certification online. And we have a lot of learners, um, Nitin in London and in Manchester as well. Okay. So we've had learners that we've certified across the whole world, right? Okay, there we go. So I hope that is useful. Now, what we're going to be doing is, um, you know, we have, uh, let me see, just to share with you, the course is going to be INR 18,900, and I'm going to convert that to USD. This will be after your discount. So instead of two, instead of $399, it will be exactly $289 for those of us that are international. Um, we're going to be starting on the 28th and you can pay securely using PayPal. So just give me a second here and I will share the link with all of you. Okay, I'm just creating um, the discounted link for those of you who are international, right? Um, just give me a second and I'll create that link here. There you go. So anyone who's international, um, you need to understand that you have a 30 day refund policy. If for any reason you have a challenge with the course, we ask no questions whatsoever and we refund this in 30 days. Okay. So all you need to do here is um, click on this discount link. If you're international and join the course, there we go. And we will automatically enroll you and you'll receive an email from us enrolling you to the course immediately. Uh, admissions have begun and we take a maximum of 15 admissions in the course. And the question I think is Canadian dollars. So there's someone called Galaxy A5 who's asking what is the payment in Canadian dollars? Nice and easy. So all you need to do is 
you just convert the same thing we have the same pricing for the whole world we do not charge any country more or less so in canadian dollars is 365 and all you need to do is convert this just a second i'll share it with you now okay here we go 365 and convert this to cad um i there we go okay there we go so please use this um, link for us uh, for canadian uh, learners we have a lot of learners based out of toronto so please go ahead and use this and just use the drop down and choose canadian dollars if you wish to pay in canadian dollars for those of you that are in india the price is only 18900 rupees that is a discount of 3000 rupees on the pricing on the website please understand that you cannot get this pricing anywhere on the internet it is only for those that joined today's webinar i deeply appreciate and i'm giving you 3000 rupees off on this pricing uh, for those of you that joined uh, today's webinar okay and i will be including all of these links uh, for your future reference now i would request your help to please fill up the feedback form okay in this feedback form anyone who fills up will receive the discounted links okay and you will receive the presentation and the recordings can you please all fill this up and say done in the chat box uh, please uh, you know understand that i respect your data deeply and it you know is totally to us now Hengi says, how much in IDR rupiah? Is that Indonesia, um, Heng Hengi? We have a lot of learners from Jakarta. So I just want to confirm. Okay, yes, yes. All right, that's perfectly fine. So all you need to do is say, there we go. Indonesian rupiah, this is the amount. And uh, I hope you can, you can see this here, Hengi. Would you like to pay in Indonesian rupiah? So what we can do is quickly convert this to Indonesian rupiah for you. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Okay, I will convert this for you and um, share this across with you. If I can just get your email ID, just fill up, you know, on uh, the feedback form. Okay, Henki. And I'll make sure, you know, that I will share it with you. Yeah. Okay. All right. The course is starting on the 28th. All right. So what we have is on the 28th of April is your next class. You can attend the webinar next week. It's an identical webinar to today's webinar. All right. And I would suggest you just go ahead and use the PayPal link uh, for USD. And those of you who are in India, I will send you the India discount link. It's a really exciting course. I think there's a lot um, that you will learn at the end of this course. Um, be able to apply data to a lot of things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Um, please note that the instructor will be different from the ones that you see here. I will be the instructor. We may have a new instructor, Amit Singh, instead of Ujwal Dalmia. So just clarifying that to you. And me and Amit will be taking uh, the accelerator. Okay. Okay. Um, I think I've got a question from Amina Jama saying that how do I get the feedback form? Okay. Are you guys all able to access this feedback form? So Amina, um, this is the link. You can also share if you have any trouble, um, you know, accessing the feedback form. Share your email ID and mobile with me in a private chat. Okay. Right. And I will, you know, make sure that I reply to you. So this is for Amina Jama. Please share your email ID and uh, mobile for me. All right. Thank you so much. And I will also need your mobile number, Amina. Thank you so much. All right. Now, for those of you who are from the HR community, would you please hang around while I give you a demo of some HR analytics, right? How many of you are interested in that? For the rest of you, um, please say done when you've filled up your, uh, you know, feedback form. So I know all of you will, you know, get your recording and all of that. All right. Thanks a lot, Amina, for your details there. There we go. So I'm going to share the feedback form with everyone.
Right, so I'm going to actually right now focus on the HR demo that I have here for some of our HR colleagues. So some of you wanted to me to talk about the Facebook data breach. Um, you know, I think basically, you know, if you ask me, it's really important that corporations understand that they need to, you know, respect um, the data, uh, you know, of, uh, of individuals. And I think that's not been happening so far, right? Okay. And that's where I think uh, the future is that there will be more regulation in uh, these multi corporations that have access to our data. I think that regulation is probably <clears throat> something that will help us in the future, right? Okay. So I wanted to show you succession planning uh, in Tableau and uh, probably we can connect to a data set. Let me see if I can open up um, a data set here where we can work on some HR analytics data. Okay. Yeah, so let me work on the HR tenure data set here. And all of you know that we've had, um, you know, challenges, um, you know. <clears throat> all right, uh, if you have any further questions, please email me directly at contact at equiskill.com. We have another webinar coming up next week on the 21st, okay? And I want all of you to tell me if you would like me to invite any of your colleagues to that particular webinar. It's exactly the same as the one that we have today. If you'd like to WhatsApp me, uh, here's my WhatsApp number. Okay. I chat on WhatsApp. You send me your questions and I will reply on WhatsApp as well. Okay. Manoj, if data is in TVs, you can easily handle it using R. Um, today you have Microsoft Scala R, which can handle data in TVs. Okay. All right. Now, um, I hope all of you know that you can register for the next webinar on our website. Yeah. So just ask your friends to go to the website, equiscale.com. And on the website, let me just show you that here right now. There we go. See, here's your website link. Okay, folks. Now on this website, if you just scroll down, you will see that we've got two events. We've got another one coming up on the 21st of April. Same event as today. So you just need to click here, free data analytics webinar on equiskill.com and you can register for the webinar on 21st April. Okay. And the question is, are there good open source alternatives yet to Tableau? Nandan Pandit has a question. All right, that's a great question. So Airbnb has something called Superset. So if you just type, um, <clears throat> there we go. Airbnb Superset, this is one good open source substitute for Tableau. So it's 100% free of cost. I'll put it in the chat box, don't you worry. All of these will be shared with you guys. So this is the Airbnb superset. I'll put it in the presentation, all right? So you don't have to save anything. The other one that's just come up is the Google Studio. So Google Analytics uh, Studio, we still have to see how good it is. But yes, I think, there we go. So it's called the Data Studio from Google. And maybe I can also share this with you. So these are some, um, you know, good tools uh, in response to the question from Manoj, which are open source, they are free of cost and you can create very good visualizations. Manoj, I hope this helps you, yeah? Okay, all right, back to Tableau. This time I've got an HR data set and we're going to understand why companies need to be a little bit more careful. Now at this point, it's one hour, 30 minutes. So those of you who wish to leave, uh, thanks Nandan for your comment, please fill your feedback form and you can leave. But those of you who can stay, then please stay. And uh, Galaxy A7, you will get the presentation via email. You need to fill up the feedback form. Only those who fill up the feedback form will get the presentation, video, data, code, everything that you're seeing here today. Okay. So I hope that's clear. I've just shared the feedback form again with you. All right. Going back to Tableau, you all know that there are huge challenges. Every company needs to plan for succession, right? And the companies who did not do that, for example, Uber, and you all know um, they had a wonderful uh, CEO who took them to a great point in their organizational growth. But at some point he had to leave. And, you know, if they had planned for that a little bit better, they would have had an easier time. But because they did not, they had a couple of um, options. They had Jeff Emelt, the CEO of GE, who wanted to take this position at Uber. And they also had someone called Meg Whitman, you know, from HP. Now, these are veterans, but there's a dark horse. I don't know how many of you know the dark horse. His name is Dara Kushro Shahi and Dara Kushro Shahi eventually became the CEO of Uber 
um, because Meg apparently, um, you know, the reports go, and I don't know this for sure, yeah. So Meg apparently, you know, negotiated um, a lot, and that didn't go down too well, right? Uh, now, for those of you who want in-class learning, it's best to learn online. You guys can chat, talk to me, and uh, you know, you can share your screen if you have doubts, and I make sure that I address this. The question is that today, you know, even Facebook has a challenge, and you never know what happens, right? I mean. Uh, Mark, well, he's been doing great, but you know what kind of pressure he's been under recently. So how do you plan succession, you know, in a data-led sort of fashion, right? Now, data doesn't know who is important and who is not. So the important things could be tenure, um, the number of years to retirement, uh, you know, the org level, the department, the ages, but how do you analyze this and figure out which departments have high risk? And I'm going to go to sheet one, and straight away hash and dash this data slash this data for you and show you how you can understand. First of all, you need to understand what is the skew in different departments. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this, you know, age here. All right, so I'm just going to duplicate this very quickly and drop age into the measures. Now, what we do sometimes is, you know, <coughs> we actually create copies of the data. Okay, the dimensions and measures come immediately after, um, you know, you click on it, right? Just a second. So if you have individual questions, please directly WhatsApp me regarding your career. All right. And I've shared my uh, WhatsApp number with you. I won't be able to take them right now because I'm doing a demo, but I will address your questions for sure. So see what I'm doing here is I'm moving tenure into the dimensions. Okay. For the time being, I'm going to treat tenure as a dimension and I'll create a histogram by dropping age on the column, I'll drop the number of records, the number of employees, um, you know, on the rows, and I'm going to change this to a count of the number of employees. Okay. And uh, then I'll drop department on top of color to see all the different departments. And I immediately realize we have a problem. And you know what the problem is? We have a skew in the data. Okay. Um, so to help you understand what is a skew in the data, basically, you have a lot of employees in some departments, for example, the access department, who are very junior, right? But some other departments like the technology department, they have a better spread of age. But the blue department, look at the line, right? It's very, very big in the beginning and very small towards the end. So this is known as a skew. And we need to look at the department from a succession st planning standpoint, where there's a lot of senior people. We also need to understand from an equal opportunity standpoint, why we have such a few people who are, you know, senior people in the access department, which is the blue department or, or the corporate services department, right? So we are an equal opportunity employer company. Every company in the world gives equal opportunity. No matter what the skew is, there is a concern. For example, the concern with the people in the blue is that there's too many junior people. Um, there's no senior people there. And the concern with Brown is that we need to plan succession, you know, because there's a lot of people that are, you know, spread out. Okay. And we need to find out why so many junior people are there because you all know that in today's world, even if you're a, you know, a 40 year old or whether you're a 72 year old, uh, you can be an intern. I don't know how many of you watched this movie by Robert De Niro, right? Did you watch this movie? Please say yes in the chat box. It's called intern. So he gets to be an intern at the age of 72. How many of you watch this movie? Okay. So the question is, why is the access department not accepting junior people? Why are they uh, not accepting senior people? This is one question. And why are other departments doing a better job of hiring people across all ages? For example, the brown department here, technologies, or the pink department here, which is programming. These have people from all ages. At the same time, we need to plan succession. Question is, who do we need to plan succession for? So I'll rename this the SKU in tenure, and I'll move to my next visualization where we'll figure out who to plan succession for. So I'll take org level two and department and tenure, and uh, let me take all three of these and drop them all on top of the detail. I want to see all of these people, isn't it? Okay, and this is not very useful, but don't worry. I'm going to drop the age on the column and you'll be able to do this once you join the course and I'll make it average age of all the employees nice and easy and I'll drop the employee IDs um, here on the rows. There we go. And we've got a nice distribution, right? 
of all the employees. I'm going to remove the zero because we don't actually need the zero. So I'll um, remove it. So this vacant space is gone. So we can see all of these employees. And now I can use the analytics. So I'll go to the median with quartiles and drop it on the graph. And immediately I know, you know, the people who are above the upper quartile of 40 years of age, and I can actually format this and make this nice and visible for everyone. So I'll go to a nice um, dashed line there probably make it nice and red in color. Okay. And we can actually identify the danger zone for succession planning, right? Right. Okay. Yes, absolutely. It should be count of number of employees. So we can just select here count, right? Thank you so much for that. At the moment you have this, you know, what is the danger zone? Okay. Let's have a look at this danger zone. This is the danger zone over here, right? This whole zone here. Now in this danger zone, the average age is 44, the upper quartile is 45 years of age. You can actually annotate this whole zone um, and call it the danger zone. And I'm gonna do that now. I'll right click and I quickly annotate this whole area and I'll call it danger zone for succession planning. Now there's a lot more that you can do once you've identified your danger zone. Um, I'll probably spread it out nicely and work on the shading and just reduce the opacity and see if I can make it colored like this. And this is how you identify the people um, in the danger zone for any organization for succession planning. What you also want to do is uh, you probably want to have a look at those employees. So that's also pretty easy. Yeah, You can actually select your data and you can you know right click and view your data. There you go. And now you can take this data, you can copy it and paste it wherever you want. For example, if you want to go and paste it in Excel, could do that nice and easy. All of the work that we're doing right in Tableau, all of the calculations that are happening behind these visualizations are actually automatically calculated. You do not need to do any work in terms of calculation in Excel whatsoever. Just go and paste your data, control A, control T. Just give me a second here. I'm going to make sure I insert tables, which is very important. And now you have your tenure. And if in tenure you want to select and you want to do some conditional formatting to see who's senior and who's junior, that's also nice and easy. There you go. So I've got a heat map here showing you the people who have very little tenure. But from a succession planning standpoint, I probably might, might want to use the other heat map, um, which is if you have more tenure, then I make you red in color. Yeah. So you can do a lot of stuff over there in Excel as well. Okay. How to import Excel into Tableau? Um, yeah, it's a fairly easy Manoj. Um, Right, with um, if you view the recording manager, you'll, you'll, you'll see that, right? So, you just need to open a new one and go for you know, import from Excel, okay? All right, so these are just a couple of visualizations, and it's easy to create dashboards as well from your visualizations. Probably talk about this queue in different departments and um, the danger zone that we have. Um, and there you go, you've got a wonderful, um, you know, visualization with the dashboard there. You can make it fit your screen as well. So you can go for fixed size and choose laptop browser so it fits your screen. Okay. And this is your succession planning in Tableau, along with the skew and tenure of different departments and the identification of the employees that you want to plan succession for. So I thought, um, you know, I hope you found this useful. Now, for those of you that wanted to just see how to sort of, you know, um, connect to a Tableau data source in Excel. Manoj, I think you missed that part there. So um, let me do that for you again. For the rest of you, I'll throw it open for questions. Um, do you have questions for me or for Amit Singh? We can take your questions. Yeah. Any questions? You, of course, have my you know, email ID and you have my phone number. So you should feel completely free to WhatsApp me, you know, your specific questions while I... Okay. Piece A says, what's the laptop uh, configuration required for this course? I'd say anything greater than, you know, 4 GB of RAM. Okay. And I'd say, you know, around um, 500 uh, GB hard disk. All right. And um, if you've got um, a 64 disk, uh, 64 bit, you know, um, computer, that'll be great. And I think Windows um, is good. And if you have Mac, Mac is fine. Um, you might have a challenge a little bit with Power BI with Mac, but I'll give you a workaround. All right. And um, Tableau trial version is sufficient for the course. Yes, we will give you that. We will give you all software's installation. That's our responsibility. Okay. 
right how to publish data in tableau uh, is another question that i've got i'll definitely show you that now for manoj uh, you know you'd ask me how to connect to excel so manoj over here right you just click on this and you connect to your uh, hr data okay manoj are you still around I'm just waiting for manoj there all right manoj kannan here you go manoj so you click on microsoft excel and you choose your uh, hr data for example long term employment statistical trends right this is another um little uh, you know worksheet that we have here and if you want to look at employment trends across different years across the whole world i think it should be fairly easy to do that uh, in tableau um just to show you that you know i can just drop the period on the column right and i can drop uh, unemployment um you know number of unemployed people on the rows right there you go uh, gender on the filter so i can look at men and women and how they kind of you know are getting employed employment or they are not getting employment i can probably select both of them um just to you know show you guys some hr data and you can drop age on the filter as well uh, there you go and you can drop you can select you know all of the age brackets and probably apply that and then you can probably drop age on top of color as well yeah there you go yeah so um you can go to show me and you can probably select the area charts um, continuous and these are your long term unemployment trends as they've grown over the years you can drop age on top of the label and you can see why the unemployment in the world has been sort of increasing right yeah you can actually enable the filter as well and select a drop down to see how people of different age groups have been impacted by unemployment globally so i hope this one you know is another interesting visualization see different age groups here and how unemployment has been increasing for different age groups globally you learn all of this you know in uh, the program and uh, we can blend data using tableau pratul will be teaching you that in the program and ubuntu <coughs> satish if you have ubuntu you know uh, the excel and uh, microsoft software right like uh, power bi those might be a challenge you uh, you'd have to just check you know i think for the purpose of the program um, you know it may be good if you can sort of install windows uh, for the time being satish okay analytics doesn't work so well on ubuntu honestly okay which one is preferable for hr analytics uh, tableau and power bi are very good and then you can actually you know for hr analytics manoj uh, kanan you don't have to uh, use r too much but you can use r for some of the things like text mining and sentiment analysis so what we did manoj right now for uh, the data for twitter we can also do for glassdoor.com data or employee uh, exit interview comments or employee satisfaction comments you know in your one on ones that we have skip level meetings that we have so for that purpose r is good otherwise you know i think tableau and uh, uh, excel are great you know for the hr data okay i hope that answers your question and uh, the lot of hr people you know they have graduated from this program and they have learned r there's absolutely no problem i would tell all of you that r is just a scientific calculator it's nothing more than a scientific calculator it is not a programming language to be afraid of okay so please be clear for that uh we are not comparing r and tableau it is r plus tableau so please understand that r and tableau are compatible with each other and it is possible for you to integrate r and tableau okay so if you just um, type here uh, using r in tableau first of all you know it's not about one tool and another tool right all tools are important remember guys i don't mean any disrespect but tools are for fools right the most important thing is learn the techniques and you will be able to you know master any tool and tools will come and go but uh, you will not pratul goel which one is preferable for finance tableau is being used very heavily in finance uh, r is being used in the past financial companies were also using sas okay so s a s now for you pratul if you need to learn sas we actually offer uh, you know recorded course um, you know in sas along with our um, program now that will be at a slightly increased pricing so you can see if you are interested in that but um, i think r is where the banking and financial companies are moving towards because it's free of cost hsbc city are all moving from sas to r okay and then we got a question from peace uh, a it says about from r and tableau what are the other programs we are going to be taught in the course so peace a you are going to learn r and um, you are going to learn tableau you are here to learn data science first of all we are not here to learn tools okay in that we learn r tableau power bi 
in this you can expect to be um, fairly at an expert level in r and intermediate um, in w and base level in power bi and uh, you will also have a base level in sql so these are the things that we are actually going through in the program okay uh, we are not covering sas okay but if you would like to learn sas then sas is a separate course and we have a course in sas as well those of you who are interested in sas please uh, drop me an email at contact at the rate equiskill.com and i will share details and a discount for the sas course as well if you want to take the sas course um, as a bundle along with this course we can do a bundle pricing as well okay so just drop me an email to amit at uh, contact at equiskill.com okay python python is used more for machine learning uh, you know advanced for data science uh, you know i think uh, data science and introductory machine learning i think r is more than enough honestly satish so i think python would be better if you are looking for you know um, ml and deep learning not so much for data science okay all right so <coughs> civil engineer uche ukubo yeah so uche uh, definitely a lot of civil engineers have gone through the analytics accelerator certification that would be the right one for you so go for that uche um if you can give me a private chat of which country you are from i will send you um yeah okay and please uh, if you could send me your uh, email and your mobile number uh, in a private chat you know i will <coughs> uh, get in touch with you and i will share the details and um, uche definitely for you it's the analytics accelerator certification that's the best course right and um, we've got a lot of learners from nigeria i don't know if you're from lagos so we've got a lot of learners from lagos uche it would be great if you could tell me which location you're based out of so i can even advise you in terms of your country and what works um, very well for you in your country but here is the data analytics accelerator certification uh, uche ukubo i think this is definitely the best course Oh, okay so for canada yes so for canada what i would say is that uh, you should learn r and w and you should also go for the bundled pricing for sas so for canada canada um, r w are great plus if you take sas you know recorded as a bundle you'll get the sas recorded course okay it's a fully recorded course with support okay you have support from us uh, in email um and we provide support within 48 hours to all your email queries okay so if i could get your email id and uh, mobile i'll send you a private chat uh, uche kugo what i'll do is i'll share across you know the bundled pricing with you for um, r w and you get sas as a recorded course as well for canada why i'm saying sas is you know uche because the banking um, world in canada is using sas a little bit so it's good to know sas of course r and w are universal um those work everywhere everywhere you know you go i think those work okay all right any other questions before we close for the day folks i want to thank you aditya um, amina jama amresh atul gupta for joining fatima uh, rabia jalal thanks a lot for joining and um, we've got uh, henki um, satya one from i think uh, indonesia thanks for joining and joseph uh, jyoti Manoj Kumar, uh, Muhammad Imran, I think I saw you last time as well in the webinar. Hey, thanks a ton. Okay, um, and how am I writing on the screen? Uh, we're using Zoom video conferencing software to write on the screen. And um, Saket Pahadia wants to know the details for Canada as well. Okay, Saket, um, if I could get your email and mobile on a private chat, it'll be easier for me to reach out to you. Or if you fill the feedback form, then that's fine. Fine. because i think in the feedback form you would have already mentioned your uh, mobile number on your and your email right okay then that's fine saket if you fill the form that's perfectly fine all right so ragunandan thanks a lot ramesh um, ravindra and uh, mp santosh of course thanks a lot mp is my colleague from g thanks for joining um, thanks satish i think you are satish from uh, ernst and young right so thanks a lot for joining so 
Sharon, um, Sayyid, Sharon John, thanks a ton for you are joining and Uche Okugo Upendra Manoj Khanna. It's really great having you all and I look forward to seeing you in the program. Uh, and I just, um, Nandan says, uh, thanks a lot, Amit, a great session. Okay. Hey, uh, Nandan, I had a quick favor to ask you. So you guys, you know, I've got a Facebook page for Equiskill here. And in the Facebook page, we've got a review section, you know, section here, right? Um, if you really enjoyed this session, you know, would you be kind enough to rate us five on Facebook uh, and um, just leave your comments a little bit there. So I'd really appreciate your comments on this free webinar that we've organized for you. Okay. And here's the Facebook page, uh, Nandan. Um, I would deeply appreciate if you could uh, rate us, you know, on this Facebook page. Uh, let me just share the exact, you know, link for the reviews here. And all of you guys, right, Pratyul, um, Saket, all of you guys, if you enjoyed the session, uh, please just click this uh, Facebook page and rate us five and share your comments. And thanks, uh, Uche, uh, George Ukugo for liking our page. Uh, you can all like our page so that you get these free events and updates, you know, from us. We post these on Facebook uh, on our page as well. So just take you to the homepage here. There you go. So you'll see that we've got these events that are going. Um, so this was the event that you attended today. We've got a repeat of this event here coming up on the 21st. So you'll get those events and you can invite your friends over. We've got um, some trainings that I've conducted in universities across the world and other interesting updates. Okay. All right. So with this, um, I'll just come to the last few slides and thank you all for having joined today's session. And um, I'll add all the links here on this slide and you've been through your Tableau and text analytics demo. Looking forward to having you join the course. Thank you so much. And let me ask Amit Singh, my colleague, to also um, say goodbye to all of you. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining all folks. Uh, it was a great session. Uh, looking forward to have you in the program. Have a great evening. Thank you. Uh, good day, good evening and good night to you wherever you are. Um, and please do invite your friends to our next webinar on the 21st. We're starting the course on the 28th of this month. So I want to see all of you in the course um, on the 28th. Thank you. Um, thanks a lot, Saket, for your comment. Thanks a lot, Santosh. Okay, so some of you are requesting the link to join the course. I think I'd shared it up above. Let me just see if I can um, pull it out for you. Just give me a second here. <clears throat> I'm just gonna pull out the link for all of you again. So all the international learners, you can just um, click PayPal.
yes so for the international learners who want to join in the course And um, when you join, you immediately get, you know, access to <clears throat> the recording of uh, the first class that you need to revise before you join the course and installation for all the softwares. You get all the installations, you even get the data for the first class. So I recommend you use this discounted code here, um, PayPal $29 and join the course right away. You have a 30 day refund. So for all of you, we should all be aware we have a 30 day refund policy in case you have any challenges, you're unable to attend due to personal issues, any issues whatsoever. Uh, and we have a recording for all the classes. And we have support. And the support is within 48 hours. We reply over email. This is from contact at the rate .com. If you have um, more questions, you'll get into trouble. We even help you one-on-one -on -one before the classes or after the classes with your doubts. So we'll see you all in the course. Well, thanks a lot. And I'm going to close the session officially now. I hope uh, no one else has any other questions. Bye-bye. Thanks, um, Uche Kugo. Thanks, Peace, for having joined the class. I'm Ray Shatul. Right. Uh, thanks, you guys. Uh, Henki. If you have any more questions, Henki, you can let me know. Um, I'm always there. Right. <clears throat> okay, great. So remember my email ID and my, uh, you know, details, right? I'm available for your questions. Thanks, Mohan and Ron. You should actually join the course. We'll, uh, you know, see you um, in the course, right? You're a wonderful learner. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye.